Hello, welcome to my student support system. In today's class, we will discuss about stroke. This lecture is in English and if you want to study in Hindi, just click on I button and you will get link of Hindi lecture or you can directly visit to channel and search for your favorite topic. What is stroke? Stroke is defined as functional abnormality of the central nervous system that occurs when the normal blood supply to the brain is disrupted. Stroke is a leading cause of serious long term disability because brain cells tend to die in this situation. Stroke can be divided into two major types ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke. What is ischemic stroke? Ischemia means decreased oxygen supply to the cells and they begin to die. This situation is known as ischemia. In ischemic stroke, there is reduced blood supply to the brain causing ischemia of brain cells due to occlusion in the arteries which supply oxygenated blood to the brain. It accounts for 85% of total stroke cases means mostly strokes are due to ischemia or ischemic type of stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke. Uh, as name suggests there is brain hemorrhage. In this type of stroke there is reduced blood supply to the brain due to extravasation of blood into the brain tissue or hemorrhage. It accounts for 15% of total stroke cases. What are the causes of stroke? Ischemic stroke is mainly caused by atherosclerosis and thrombus formation. Large artery thrombotic strokes are caused by atherosclerotic plaque in the large blood vessels of the brain. And due to this atherosclerosis plaque, there may be the chances of thrombus formation around it. And due to thrombus and plaque, the lumen of artery which supplies oxygenated to uh, brain tissue or cells, it becomes very narrow and blood supply is reduced. And this in turn results in lack of oxygen or reduced oxygen to the brain tissues. Ischemic stroke may also be caused by embolism. Emboli originate, may originate in the heart and they circulate with the blood and when they reaches to cerebral vasculature, mostly uh, the left middle cerebral artery, they occult the artery, they obstruct the artery, results in stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke may be caused by intracerebral hemorrhage, subdural hemorrhage, aneurysms or AVM means arteriovenous malformations. Due to bleeding, blood supply and oxygen supply to the brain tissue is reduced. It leads to death of brain cells. What clinical manifestations appear due to stroke? Clinical manifestation of an ischemic stroke depend upon the location of lesion, the size of the area of inadequate perfusion or decreased oxygen supply and the amount of collateral blood flow. The patient may present with any of the following uh, sign and symptoms such as numbness and weakness of the face arms or leg, uh, especially on one side of the body that is known as hemiparesis. Apart from this, there may be confusion due to and change in mental status, difficulty in speaking or understanding the speech, visual disturbances such as diplopia, difficulty in walking, dizziness, depression and withdrawal symptoms, loss of balance or coordination of the muscles, 
sudden severe headache, paralysis of one side of the body that is known as hemiplegia because normally the ischemia is at a particular place. So it may be either right side or left side. So one side is affected normally. Loss or decrease of deep tendon reflexes. Apraxia means inability to, uh, inability to perform previously learned actions. Homonymous hemianopia means loss of half of the visual field, maybe right half or left half. Difficulty in interpreting the visual, tactile and auditory stimuli. The patient with hemorrhagic stroke may have the clinical manifestations similar to the patients with ischemic stroke that we have just discussed. Other symptoms that may be observed more frequently in the patients with acute hemorrhagic stroke are vomiting, sudden change in the level of consciousness and possibly focal seizures due to frequent brain stem involvement. The patient with intracranial aneurysms and arteriovenous malformation may have some unique clinical manifestations such as severe headache and often loss of consciousness for a variable period of time for few seconds, few minutes or maybe hours. There may be pain and rigidity in the back and neck that is nuchal rigidity and in spine also due to meningeal irritation. So what diagnostic investigations can be done? Uh, first one is history and physical examination and neurological examination give some clue and then CT scan and MRI to confirm the type of stroke, the size of and location of hematoma in case of uh, hemorrhagic stroke, cerebral angiography to confirm the diagnosis of an intracranial aneurysm or AVM, lumbar puncture to check ICP and of course ECG also. Treatment. Medical management of ischemic stroke includes use of platelet inhibiting uh, medications including aspirin, extended release, dipyridamol plus aspirin, clopidogrel and ticlopidine to prevent further thrombus and embolism formation. Thrombolytic agents that is TPA, tissue plasminogen activator uh, may be used. Uh, to treat the ischemic stroke by dissolving the blood clot that is blocking the blood flow to the brain. Surgical management includes carotid endartectomy. It is performed by removal of an atherosclerotic plaque or thrombus from the carotid artery because this is the main artery which takes blood to the brain. Carotid stunting may be used if the atherosclerosis sclerosis or thrombus causes narrowing of the lumen uh, with or without angioplasty. It is less invasive procedure that may be used for ischemic strokes. Management of hemorrhagic stroke consists of bed rest with sedation to prevent agitation and stress because mostly it causes uh, seizures and management of vasospasm and surgical and medical uh, treatment to prevent re-bleeding. Anti-seizure agents are often administered prophylactically to, uh, for a brief period of time. Analgesic agents may be prescribed for head and neck pain and surgical management may be needed for the large hematomas in the brain or aneurysms. Nursing management. Proper assessment is done by health history and physical examination and a nursing care plan is prepared accordingly. The nurse should also assess mental status, sensation, perception, mental control, swallowing ability, nutritional and hydration status, skin integrity, activity tolerance, bowel and bladder activities. A patient with hemiplegia has unilateral paralysis, means paralysis of one side, have the chances of developing contractures because the when the muscles are not in use, they, there may be a spasm of opposite muscle. So, contractures may occur. 
the nurse uses correct positioning of the patient to prevent contractures nurse assist in maintaining good body alignment and prevent uh, compressive neuropathies especially the ulnar and peroneal nerve neuropathy to prevent adduction uh, contracture of the affected shoulder while the patient is in bed or sleeping a pillow is placed in axilla the fingers are positioned in such a way that they are slightly flexed so some cotton roll may be placed there the hand should be placed in a uh, slight supine position because this is a functional and natural anatomical position the nurse encourages the patient to assist to stretch the muscles of the hand and fingers because spasticity of hand can be uh, prevented by stretching and splinting as soon as possible patient is assisted out of bed and an active rehabilitation program is started when the patient is able to sit up the nurse should encourage him or her for personal hygiene and activity especially to prevent the muscle loss and contractures patients with decreased field vision should be approached from the side where the visual perception field is intact for example if the uh, right side of the eye is affected then the nurse should approach from this side and if this side is affected then approach should approach from this side so that the client can easily see what is happening the patient can be taught to turn the head in the direction of the uh, defective visual field so that the uh, candidate who is coming or talking he can see clearly uh, for to compensate the field loss or visual field loss increasing the natural and uh, or artificial light in the room and providing eye glasses help to increase the vision after a stroke the patient may have transient urinary incontinence due to confusion inability to communicate or the needs so the nurse should use intermittent catheterization with steroid technique the voiding pattern is analyzed and the urinal or bed pan is offered on this pattern or schedule a regular training schedule is adhered to uh, even if pressure relieving devices regular turning uh, schedule is because if we change the frequent position then skin breakdown can be prevented so positioning change frequently and care to the pressure points to prevent uh, skin breakdown this is very important for uh, stroke patients or unconscious patients family members play an important role in the patient's recovery family members are encouraged to participate in the uh, counseling and to use the support system to prevent patient in uh, the emotional and physical stress patients and family education is fundamental component of rehabilitation the nurse provides teaching about the stroke its causes prevention rehabilitation process home care during the discharge planning thank you students for watching this video you can subscribe the channel you can like facebook page and for making your notes you can visit mynursingstudents.blogspot.com you can follow me on twitter instagram and join facebook group nursing notes thank you have a nice day